Good morning, friends. I'm kind of early here. Um, what is it? 6.40 in the morning, 6.45. Um, I got up early this morning. Um, had to do some things. Uh, I'll be back. Don't forget, we'll be back at 11 um, Central Time today to do our... our um, Tech Thursday. I'm just still working on the Sunny, and um, I want to keep as much as this build as I can on camera. Um, but I get excited and, and antsy, and like I said yesterday, oop, when I left you yesterday, not really feeling the resin GTR 10 motor. Um, it's just I'm not getting the look out of it like I wanted versus this um, kit engine of the 90 300 zx motor so what i done is um like yesterday you see me working on the upper plenium um i put in those little red uh the little aluminum sub shot um i put the little resin Selenium on top, and then I want to work on some air filters, trying to get some air filters going. Um, and then I had to stop, because I, like I said, I want to do this build on camera for you guys. Um, that was my main purpose of doing the live stages. Well, thanks, buddy. Um, let me stress this to you, Shot. Um, man, I'm just a hobbyist, buddy. Um, I build kits to my liking. Um, and like you said, and like you've heard me say through some of my other videos, bud, I go for the visual. If you're a builder that wants to be a exact, um, you want to be um, picture perfect on everything you build, buddy, um, please follow some other builders. Um, get, get some other of your questions answered from somebody um, that is more precise than I am. And then on your quicker builds, you can follow my advice. Um, there, we you know we have a bunch of different stages of building in the hobby. Um, I want you to be able to enjoy it as much as I do. Um, so build, build to your heart content, buddy. And um, it's great to hear that I'm a help. Um, but don't ever stop growing, and um, don't take everything I uh, I put out here on YouTube as the only way it can be done. Um, do you have a, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. You know, we all build different styles too, but um, like I said, this afternoon, we're going to, um, at, ele at 11, earlier in the morning, I'm going to take this pre-built that I have here, and I'm going to show you a way that I would um, lower it, um, you know, because it's right here is molded in. You can see how that, you won't really be able to lower that, all that stuff there is molded in and and whatnot. So I was just going to show um, a quick way how to get something like this on aftermarket wheels and to lower it to get the look that you want. Um, and like I said, I, I go for the visual shot. Um I go for the, the, the eye appeal or the, the bench appeal, however you know you wanna wanna call it. So there's some great builders out there. There's great you know, there's great advice. I just um glad that you chose um to attend my shows and my videos. Um so what I wanna do now is I'm trying to get the hood on there. Yeah, Tom, how you doing, bud? I got up early this morning, man. This little truck is, this little truck is, um, you know, it, I'm trying to do this whole build, buddy. Um, if you guys don't know Tom, um, Tom and I, um, are good friends on Facebook. Um, he's always in the middle of a project, uh, just like I am. Um, we give each other, uh, motivation. We give each other, um, uh, we ruffle each other's feathers to keep us building. Um, I tell you what Tom has got going on right now. He took a 64 Cadillac and made it a wagon. And then I took the 65 Belvedere and made it a wagon. Um, 
Tom also, he's got these Dodge vans. He's got these older style vans. Yeah, too many damn projects, buddy. <laughs> uh, he's got these Dodge vans, guys. That that are sick. You know, they bringing out the they brought out the mid seventies uh, to early eighties Dodge van. Um, round two brought it back out. It's going to be black on the box. But Tom's got the original window vans. And he's made one a shorty, and he's got one that's long and has all the windows. Those are sick. I would love, here's what I did with my van, but I got the Ford van. Um, I, I got that Ford van from um, round two when they remade it. Um, and this is what I did with my van. Um, but like I said, this is my Ford van. Um, but Tom's is a, Tom's is a shorty. Um, like this right here is a shorty. Um, but it's got all the windows in it, and he slammed it on some Zimmerman wheels, and dude, it is just sick. Speaking of which, Tom, I got some um, Photo X grills left. Um, this right here is a flame one. I'll look through my Photo X box, um, but I can't remember if the Dodge grills are open or not. Um, and then this right here, you know, I, I detailed it all up, um, put headlights in it, got rid of the, the come on, focus. Got rid of the molded in headlights and put headlights in it and you know then it's all custom exhaust but tom tom is like me um you it don't go stock it, it always has to be somewhat custom put his own touches on it and come on focus and one of my favorite th projects he's got going on right now is those dodge vans um they're sick yeah, um, Sniper, I just watched your video about your um, um, web page, so <clears throat> best of luck to you on that one, bud. Um, no disrespect, but, you know, I'm fully invested in ScaledWorld.net, and it sounds like you're trying to do the same thing that is going on over there. I wish you luck. Um, if you need any help, um, you can contact um, Pedro Morales um, on... Um, Facebook or, or Pete Morales on Facebook um, Go over there. You can um, contact him and he'll help you. Um, he is the owner and operator Over at scaledworld.net. He'll be able to help you a lot um, Share information with you um, I build exclusively for scaledworld.net as far as um, What you wanted to do buddy? Um, but you're more than welcome to use any of my tip and how-to videos and anything that I post up on um, Facebook. Um, but as of building, um, you know, I'm, I'm vested in ScaledWorld.net, but on the building side. But any information that you want to use, um, you're more than welcome to use it. Um, link my channel or link the videos themselves. Um, but what Twisted Sniper is trying to do, he's trying to do what we've done over here at ScaledWorld.net. Um, he's trying to give you guys a place to um, share your tips, your texts, um, your how-tos, um, even your builds um, and whatnot. So go um, um, contact Twisted Sniper. He'll give you guys more information. Um, if you are a vendor... Of any sort, um, he would like to link your guys's, um, I guess either PayPal or web pages um, over there as he ventures into doing a web page like um, we have going over here at SkilledWorld.net. Um, there's a lot of great builders um, out there, Twisted. Um, I know you'll get the support. I just um, wanted to say I. I when you ask for personal builds, I will be one of them that I, I would strictly just build for scaledworld.net. Um, I'm fully invested with these guys. Um, they're my best friends as well. Um, but like I said, I'll support you. And um, you're free to use anything um, that I post. It's just um, on the build side, I build when I say, you know, like right here, we're doing um, we're doing the C1 build for Scaled World. Um so hopefully you can find a builder in the community um, that you can build a relationship with that can build for you. Um, but it sounds cool. It sounds like you're underway on that. Um, 
let me get this going over here. Guys, like I mentioned, um, the Diversified Scalar Show coming up here in September. Uh, I want to welcome George this morning. I hope you're not um, getting distracted from your work, brother. I explained to these guys yesterday um, that you are a firefighter up there in Jersey, and that some days, you know, you pull your 48 hours. Um, what was I going to say? Now I can't find the pamphlet. But anyway, um, Pete had shared with me over the weekend that the Diversified Scalar crew, they all got together and had a, a nice little build day and took some pictures. Um, so... That is cool. I don't have a club. I'm not part of a club. Um, I'm, I have been a member of the Model Car Builder Association um, for, for shit now. 12 years. Um, they're based out of California. Um, we have heavy hitters in the Model Builder Association um, like Anthony Rios, um, the late great Roger Chavez, um, Wes Salazar, uh, myself, um, you got a ton of great builders out of there. Um, good morning, Dave. Good morning, Jeff. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I left left us with yesterday. Um, the 2010 GTR. Like I said, I'm still favoring this Nissan motor. Um, now, Tom... Speaking of Tom Jackson that's with us this morning, now he's going, I think he's going with the original Skyline 2000 motor. Now he has the coupe project underway, and the way he detailed the motor is just sick, but um, that motor is too far into the detail for his coupe. But I think he's going to go with the original. I've seen some other people do uh, the original as well, and some of the... Um, I don't know the name of the Nissan Motors, guys. <laughs> but I know some of them are doing um, some of the straight sixes and, and four cylinders as well. Um, this right here is the like a 90s, 80s, 90s, 300ZX motor. And this right here would be the 2000 GTR 10 motor. Um, what I did is I made those and then we left. But off camera, I... Got me some of my resin filters out, and I made me some little pipes, and I was trying to set this up like this. Tell me what you guys think about this look, you know, and get the filters in there. But I got to sand the filters down, and once I get the filters sanded down, I'll be able to move those pipes a little bit better. Um, it fills it up. I still got to build all the firewall and everything, but as it sets right now, those filters got to come down because it's not letting the hood um, fit right all the way. Yeah, yeah, but you made it look good, Tom. You made it look real good. Um, Tom's not only a model car builder, guys. Um, he has some real one-to-one -one cars. You ought to see his dad, 64 Impala, um, all stock, convertible, just beautiful. And then, Tom, what year is your truck? Is it 55? And then Tom's got a beautiful uh, red uh, Chevrolet Stepside pickup, and it is just awesome. And um, 57, yeah, it, it it is just awesome. And um, him and his him and him and them they get out and do some car shows um so tom's full of really really nice pictures um and like i said um also a great builder and, and great person i call my friend and um he's um he needs to get his butt back to making some videos so we could see <laughs> we can see what he's doing but that's what I want to do this morning a little bit. And like I said, we'll be back at 11. I'll show you a, a quick way. Um, yeah, but you already have you already have your... Um, it's like a tea bucket. The BMW, um, Jody just bought himself um, his second midlife crisis car. <laughs> he uh, got him a, a BMW Z3 convertible. Um, sweet little, sweet looking little car. And I believe Ravel has that kit, Jody. I'd like to see you get that kit and build it, buddy.
So what I did now is I try to center me up a, a orange line here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to stand that flat without losing. Yeah, but I don't know if the Tamiya has the motor. I think the Ravel had the motor. You know what I mean? I think it was a fully detailed. Unless it's like the new Mini Cooper where it don't. Heck, I don't know. So basically, all I'm going to do is start sanding this. I don't want to lose that round piece. Let's see if we can't get this back in camera. I don't want to lose the round look. Yeah, later, Tom. Thanks for popping in this morning. Yeah, he has. And Tom's like me, guys. He's not afraid to pick up an older kit and make it what he wants. Um, that's one thing what I enjoy is... Um, is you, you, you pick it up and it's your product. It's your piece. Um, we're the ones that paid the cost. So we should be able to build it to our liking. And um, some of the crowd out there, be like, <laughs> they don't enjoy us hacking, ha hacking up on um, some rarities that they... <laughs> so it's pretty funny to see the responses that some of us get when we post. That, you know, like when I was cutting up my Johan Mavericks and... <laughs> And stuff like that. So I just want to send them down just enough. So that way I can pull the arch down a little bit. I know George has been working on his um, diversified scalers um, theme car. Um, like I mentioned yesterday, that little Datsun 510 that he's doing. Um, and like you said, he's taken... Where'd my grill go? He's um, he's taken the headlights from the skyline. So if you can't see that, he's taken these bezels. And he's added them into his 510. And then he's taken the Nissan um, tail lights uh, from the skyline and added it to the 510. Um, there's some other Skyline um, things in there. It's going to be a sick little build. Um, they're sick little cars to begin with. Trying to get them the same flatness, guys. So I'm sitting there sizing them up. Our buddy that's usually, he probably either sleeping still or at work already because he's an hour ahead of me. But Thomas Solstice, um make me kind of jealous this week. Um, me and my wife and the family, when we do vacations, we usually go to Florida and Thomas is based out of Florida. Um, he runs a detail shop. But sometimes in the morning before he goes to work. Um, sometimes before Thomas goes to work. Um, the punk will go to the beach and do some surfing. And he sends me these pictures of the sun coming up. And him on the beach in the water. And man I get so damn jealous. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so what I've done is sanded those down a bit. <laughs> and all these tubes are just solder, guys, um, because they're easy to bend. And so we're going to go, you know, I'm going to put a bit of tack in there. They, they're a little loose. Hello, Josh. Um, Josh, if you guys ain't subscribed to um, ResDim Designs, go ahead and check him out. Um... Josh builds pretty much like I do also um, cars. Um, he's been doing some figures. He's been doing really good in the figures, matter of fact. Um, it's just, you know, we pushing our pushing our hobby interest a little bit. And um, we just happen to do it around about the same time and around about the same places. So um, we're just doing that. I'm going to pull this truck closer to me. I'm going to keep you guys in camera here. 
You know what, I'm going to do a little bit of spotting here. We just want enough to, you know, tack it into place so that way we can move it and arrange it to where our liking is. And like I said, guys, I'm excited now that Chip and Lisa will be stocking the glue. those tacked in those tacked in center that up let's center that up we're trying to get so we do that do that what it is, is this curve of the hood comes down right at the point. Right there at that point. See, I think it's not even... Okay. So we need to turn these two. Let me ask you guys this while we're live on the channel. If you posted something on YouTube, look, I think I got it. I think with that little bit of sanding and, you know, once I hinged the hood and everything, guys. Once that little bit of sanding, I think that, that's got it. What do you guys think about that? Running the plenium like that with the two little air filters. You guys, let me, um... Now... I like the look of the of the 90s 300Z, but the more power would be out of the GTR 10. So does that look that look believable, guys? Dual air intakes would well, be cold air intakes instead of a turbo. Um, you like that, Jody? Here's one thing I wanted to ask you guys. All right. Say you put the say you put a build out there online. Would you rather say say I built this? This is a built up that I bought. But say I built this and I make me a video and look at look at the discomfort on oh, discomfort. Look at the, the damage done or whatnot. Say I post this out here on YouTube or even on Facebook. Look at the way the silver around the window was detailed you know and then the glue mark was very big for a mirror and then you can see there's a glue mark there too and then say i put that out there and then you open up the hood and you can see all the paint you know you can see where all the paint strip is because you know they brush too much on there and um you know to put this online would you rather it somebody come out there and point out to you it's like, you know, I like, you know, I'd rather hear, man, I like that car, and then give me advice how to fix this. You know what I mean? Instead of saying, oh, man, great job. Because this is not a great job. And we see a lot of people not getting um, the right responses. I want to say they're not getting the right responses. Um, I'd rather know. It's like, look, Minnie, um, that side trim is a little rough. Have you tried the Molotov markers? Um, have you tried a Sharpie marker? Have you tried bare metal foil? You know, instead of saying, oh, man, car looks great. Because these people, if they keep hearing 
if they don't keep hearing the, if they don't hear the truth, they're going to believe that what they're doing is still great and keep moving on. And then when somebody else points that out, well, I had 10,000 people give me a thumbs up so they liked it. What do you know? You know what I mean? I think we should tell them the truth right off. Now, be respectful when doing so. But how, would you guys rather just say, hey, man, I like that build, or would you guys rather hear the truth? You know what I mean? Would you rather hear, it, you know, I get a lot of comments from you guys that follow me. And you guys are thanking me um, for the tips and stuff that I share. But just because, um, yeah, Dave, and, and, and Dave, Dave hit the point on the head. We have spoiled brats now. We have kids that don't get no discipline. We have kids that don't try because um, everything's made easy. Everything's made easy. I don't want to offend him. I don't want to hurt his feelings. I don't want to do this, you know. So everybody gets a trophy. I remember when I was growing up, you had first place, you had second place, you had third place, and that was it. If you didn't earn it, you didn't get nothing. And and now they got the participation trophy. It's one thing to keep the kids encouraged. But if you don't motivate them, you don't give them a reward, it's like, here, no matter what you do here, I'm going to give you this. No matter what, you know. So they don't try. You know, I want to say, hey, you can earn this once you get here. You know, you can't, you know, you don't just give it to them. Um, our friend, Little Joe, um, Back, Bay, uh, Back Bay Customs. He um, tried to share some advice a few months ago and literally kind of got, like, cussed out, you know, when he tried to give someone advice. And sometimes, and like, yeah, Jody, Jody, and that's my purpose, Jody, is not to go out there. Uh, I don't want you guys going out there and being... Um, can I say this, lack of better words, I don't want to offend nobody. Don't go out there and be an ass about it. Go out there and be motivated about it. Um, like, okay, say here on this. Like I told you guys, I was going for the visual. Um, the real way this motor is set up, it has coil packs along the top of the valve covers, and then the wires go straight to the cylinders. Um, and it will have individual coils. Um, what I chose to do is do like the front, um, the front coil packs, like which would be on, uh, on a 4.6 liter Ford, you know, like a Thunderbird motor or something like that. Um, I like the looks of the longer wires, you know, give it to more, um, more definition, but some, some people would just put wires in the motor and then just start wiring it, you know, um. And they get comments like, oh man, great engine detail. But they're not knowing that, you know, you have, you can see where I, I re-ran all the wires and to overlap each other and then to do like a firing order. You know, you got two, four, six, eight, and over here would be your one, three, five, seven, you know, or yeah, one, three, five, seven. yeah, seven, okay. Early in the morning for me, guys. <laughs> And then, like, I built, let me see, I built the fuel regulator right there. And then the fuel line's going up into the fuel rails. And then the the injector's going from the fuel rails into the upper plenium. And then right here would be the throttle, um, the throttle spool. Um, and then the throttle linkage, throttle return spring. Um, some of these people are saying, oh, man, great motor. I really like the detail to the motor. Not telling the guy that, you know, you, you still have more stuff to add. You have to add, um, you'd have to add your throttle cables. Um, you can't have a throttle linkage without a throttle return. Yeah, later, Shot. Thanks for joining me this morning. And like I said, this right here will get posted up. You can watch it later. Um, and don't forget to check out the, the tech tip coming up here at 11. And, um, 
you know, um, that's really been on my mind. Um, it was, you know, I see stuff like when we were voting, um, when we were voting on, um, I think it's a great idea that Chevy lets us, um, vote on the street stock guys and, um, we can all, you know, take a vote and everything. But then you see some people, it's like, if I'm judging, if I'm going to judge Jody's bike, say Jody just finished, um, four custom bikes. I'm going to look at Jody's bikes, and even though Jody's my friend, um, I'm going to look at Jody's bikes, and, and I'm going to point out um, what I see. You can judge on motor, you can judge on interior, you can judge on um, the outside, you can judge on the chassis, and then the overall video. So if I look at Jody's, and we know um, Jody is... Um, really loves his indie indie cars his formula one cars so the bikes and regular cars are kind of new to him um jody i know jody builds uh almost out of box you know what i mean um just because um jody travels between the u.s and costa rica um he's got his son and and you know his family stuff going around so jody um when his day's not packed um he's a retired doctor um so he, he, you know, once his day is done, you're doing his running around and whatnot, he'll come back to the bench. Um, so he takes it upon himself to show us this bike. Um, I'm going to judge him off what I see. And then, um, you see, say say I gave Jody out of 20, say I, I gave Jody an 11. You know, there's no aftermarket in there. There was no engine wiring. Um, there was no um, roughing up the tires. Look like the the tires were were ran. You know, but I gave him I gave him points on being very clean, um, nice looking paint. Um, you know, you could put all the money you want. You could put all of my photo X detail into this motor right here you know you can have what did chip say in his video you can have 30 you can have 30 dollars in photo etch in a motor but you put it in a glue bomb you wasted your money you know so you know you go for the overall and jody's overall is very very eye appealing i'm the type of builder that i go for the eye appeal like i've mentioned so i give him an 11 but then say, I'm going to pick on you for a minute, uh, Josh. Um, say uh, Josh, which is Ramsdam Design, he, go, he goes to place his vote. And he likes Jody's color. He likes custom bikes. He likes Jody himself. So he gives Jody um, a perfect 20. You know, now I look like the asshole because I give my friend a, a, an 11, a 12, you know, and here it is, Josh comes along and gives the guy a 20. And, um, you know, some, you know, it just, I don't think a builder um, gets motivated to challenge themselves if all they hear is, great job, man, you're doing great, that looks great. You know, you, you, you have to point out, I'd rather hear say, Minnie, that's a good idea on that truck. But you need to do, you know, something else. Yeah, that's right, Blair. I understand that, too. Oh, good morning, Monty. How are you doing? Um, Monty Davis is with this guy this morning. If you ain't subscribed to his channel, go over there and show him there's more in this world than just Mopars. I mean, that he needs to get his models built, finished, and we need to see an update. Um, and then how's that grandbaby doing, buddy? Um, he just had a new grandbaby this year, guys. He built... What color orange is that, Monty? He has a really nice orange on his newest um, on his newest build. Um, I like bright colors, guys. I like greens, blues, reds, orange. Um, and he's got a really bright orange, almost a grabber color orange. Orange. Okay, so it's just orange. <laughs> I need to get over to my buddy's house, and it'll make you sick, Monty. I got a buddy, um, his name's Dave Babson. Um, he lives a few miles uh, down the road from me, and he has a 70 GTX, 
and uh, he has a real super bird, and there's 492 models on top of them. He does not drive them. They sat in his three-car garage covered in model kits. Um, it would make you sick, son. Um, they're both blue. He likes the, the Chrysler blue from the 70s, and it's amazing. I guess I hadn't seen the Blazer yet. Yeah, Monty's a big Mopar fan, guys. He likes the bird. What I like about the Mopar kits back in the day, um, if you guys ever follow box art, um, it seems like when Johan would do the Ford or the, the Sotos or whatnot. It was just a picture. But then when they went to do their box art, man, they would go all out on the Mopar stuff. Um, clouds of smoke, r the Roadrunner on the on the box sometimes. Um, they, they do have some of the greatest box art. So, front, front, rear, rear. So where do I go now? Now I think I'm, I'm I'm sitting here just staring at the motor, guys. I'm trying to get um, my feel for it, and I you know I once I get color and stuff on it, I'll it'll probably you know get a better response out of it. But I kind of I wanted to do a quick video, um, get some feedback, I, cause I kind of want to do this whole build on camera with you guys, but I also got to get kids up for school now and got to get the bench cleaned up for the 11 o'clock thing but I think the hood sets I'll probably do some the hood sets right up on there now or it just falls down a little bit I was trying to get the clearance on the hood um, I'll have to do the hinges and like I say we still have to build the whole engine engine compartment and everything um george he wants to make his a short bed i got another one of these i might make it a short bed but i don't have another clip um like i said me and me and p over at skilled world have discussed if we got another if we get another clip um from c1 i think we want to put it on the coop I think we want to put it on this right here and then do a custom little sunny coop. Um, I, I had to see what it looked like, so I cut it off. There's pictures on Facebook, guys. Um, and that's about that. Um, before, I, before I turn us all off here this morning on this one, I want to share some stuff with Josh. Um, Josh, here's my newest little figure, bud. Um, let me see. I want to get a, let me get, I've never sealed these before, guys. So, Josh and these guys are putting testers doll coat on them, um, to get them to seal up to protect the, to protect, the, um, the finishes. So, I finally went and got some doll coat yesterday, um, and then put a seal on this but I kind of wanted to share it um we both um, follow styrene syndicate pretty often and then you know you got the um, amigos page and you know some of those guys over there um they build a little bit of everything and then you know you got the ISM pages so I've been very motivated to do other stuff and this is Josh has been doing the same thing Now let's see if we can get this to focus. Focus. So this right here is the new Josh. This right here is one of the new Wiz kids. Wow. 
Right here's one of the new... <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, defocus. So right here's one of the new Wiz kids. And it's supposed to be a gargoyle. But I want, I painted them up like I told them guys on Facebook. It'd be my personal demon of once. Because um, in this hobby, it's like you're always wanting more and more and more. And I put a bunch of little gadgets and gadgets around it. Um, but basically, it was a gargoyle, Josh. And then I just painted him up. Um, I started this other one, Josh. Um, I cut his arm off. And I'm, make, I'm making him, he's reaching. And what I'm going to do is I got some chains. And I'm going to make him like, you know, we're bound. And we're always trying to escape. So I got some chains I'm going to put around him. Um, a lot of these people, these are Gargoyles guys in the um, Dungeons and Dragons line. But it's a new company called Wiz Kids, And it's just something I've been um, painting around with. Trying to get a little bit. A little bit better but you can see i i did the um blood wash on his wings to make it look like you know i had the the veins were popping out and they're really detailed guys but they are super duper small i mean let's see here's a 124th scale wheel and tire and look Oh, so that right here was challenging, you know what I mean? But doing stuff like this, it gets it keeps me out of my model building rut. Um, it'll keep me out of my bottle building rut. And um, it actually is, um, it's like another tool. Um, because look at the little stuff that we're, um, we're trying to detail. You know, um, if you can't paint, you know, get this grill detailed up and emblems and whatnot, um, you know, painting little stuff like this, um, that emblem is almost the size of its head. So to paint his horns and his eyes, you know, yeah. Oh, th th <laughs> yeah, thanks, Monty. I don't drink coffee, bud, so I don't shake. <laughs> and um, so they're nice little breaks, and it helps, you know, it'll, it'll teach me. You know, I was doing, I did this guy here first, fellas. I did this guy here with, um, um, with the help of, uh, Gilbert from Red Dragon Model Works. And he showed me how to do the tinting and the fading and the washing. And, um, you know, so I was just sitting here. Um, it's easier for me to learn if I watch you do it, then you tell me how to do it, and then you just let me do it. And, um, so... Um, hello, Marcos. Um, so with Gilbert, he was, uh, we were talking through Facebook. And as I was doing this, he was, um, showing me where some of the blends should be. Yeah, but look, Jody, here's the difference. Here's a, this right here is a Reaper Bones. Um, this right here is called the, the, um, um, King Troll. And then here's that little, that little Wiz Kid figure, um, so this right here was much easier to do <laughs> than that. And then my favorite is because Gilbert was teaching me how to do color blends. Um, I took this. This right here is called um, the Boring Horror. And then I was just trying different things. Um, this right here is Stone Gray. And then you got Asphalt up in there. And then um, he got some yellow, and then I hand painted um, the red stripes, and then I, you know, just do some little, like a little tribal. Um, then he showed me how um, I I brought the blood, you know, see if you guys can't see that. I brought the blood over the top, and just trying to highlight some stuff, and and that's what's great, you know. Um, I wouldn't have done this before without. Um, YouTube and Facebook because I wouldn't have challenged myself. Um, Josh was very encouraging. Um, it, Atomic Dog has been busting my bones um, about getting into some figures and painting figures. So, you know, there's, there's like, I'm trying to motivate you guys. Um, there's other people out there that still motivate me. So, we're all growing. We all got room to grow. Um, but, um, Come back, check me out about 11 o'clock, guys, Central Time. Um, I'm going to get this bench cleaned up. I'm going to get some um, stuff ready for 
um, the live uh, tech Q and A. Um, go eat me some breakfast and get the kids up and about. But um, all we did today, um, Marcos, is um, I wanted to. I had a, a vision in my head. I kind of I want to keep this whole build buddy on um, the feed so that way everybody can actually follow along. And so we were working on the motor of this upper plenium today. And then by the time, guys, by the time I had the throttle body linkages to it, and then we have the EGR stuff to take to it, um, I'll probably make a small blow-off valve for each one of those. You know, the detail will come, and it will make it look good. Um, Marcos, guys, um, is doing really well too um dang it kicking wing i'm about to i'm about to drop this live feed bud um we had a party over at kicking wings last night if you guys joined his video and dude he had the best sparklers and snakes um they're his favorites and so we just sat there for a little bit and we watched snakes and he wouldn't light all the sparklers but he lit a few and um you should see him, man. He's a wild man when he lights those snakes up. <laughs> oh, how you doing, Skylar? Do you work this morning, buddy? And I want to get to playing with these. I know I said I'm going to end the feed, but I need to... We got, got the new set of beads in yesterday, if you guys don't remember me saying. Um... 84 he um commented um 84 c10 he had commented about getting these crimp tubes and um i went and found them and picked them up they are little they see this right here is 1.5 millimeter so let's see See on my ProTech thing, 1.5.59. So 23, it says 23 should fit in these. 21, I bought them, I bought them all. There's 22, okay 23. It says 23 should fit in here. I don't know. It looks too big for 23. It looks like a 22 would fit. So let's see. We're going to just do this. Then I always, cu I always cut off. Start fresh. Alright. I'm going to take this right here out. Yeah, see these, these are going to be too small for, for the 23. Let's see. Number four. One of number four. Oh, yeah. Number four should work for that one. I'll have to write there on the packages. Yeah, see, the number four works on the 23 really well. So right there will give me, and what I usually do is, is I'll drill this into the block or the body, depending upon what I use this size hose for. And then I'll glue this onto here about that. That way it's not glue and flush. And that way it stays in there. So yeah, that works well. So I have to write on that package um, the 20. Three would be the number four. Yeah, that works. Put them back in there. And these little things is full. That's what I like about them. They look small, but there's 75 pieces in there. Then, let's see, number three. 
if we go down here's what I usually use for my big motor radiator hoses and this is the number 24 so we got 24 23 so let's see if we do the 22 I bet the 22 will fit in the number threes and let's see I think they're gonna to be too big No, nope, that should that should be pretty good. Yeah, see that'll fit that fits really nice on there. Look, it won't even move. That's a very nice fit on that one. And like I said, without, you know, I'm still learning myself, guys. I mean, I know I'm trying to teach you guys some stuff, but I did not know about um, these little sizes of the chrome. And then, like I said, you could get the crimp beads. I like the crimp tubes. Um, but you can get the crimp beads also. And they're by uh, Bead Beadlin. And they come in four packs. They come in different colors also. Let's see styrene monkey how are you doing bud um if you haven't had a chance styrene um to go check out twisted snipers um video this morning he mentioned you and mentioned how you were a great support when he came back to the hobby and i just wanted to sh uh, throw that out there um styrene he might not um post as often as some of us other guys do but um, he is a great member of the community. He's very helpful as well. And let's see. I'm just trying out. We got these new beads, styrene. And I'm just checking them out. Seeing of what size hoses they fit. right there now when I go when I go to the 21 the number two looks I mean it will it'll work but it, it's not as tight as fit see how it goes it gets a little bit come on focus it gets a little bit of movement in there it's not as tight as fit as the other beads are so maybe let's see should be useful somewhere so let's see what the number one, let's see how tight the number one is on them. Now these number ones are filthy tiny. That's, that's a bead guys. I want to try to use that. <laughs> Good thing I have my spectacles. Yeah, too small. It's too small for the 21. Probably going to be too small for the 20. That would probably be the size I need for the 19. So, so it's not fitting all my needs yet. But it's fitting a lot of them. Oh, yeah. Fits the 19s really well. Look at that, guys. Fits that 19 really well. Just a little movement. Enough I can get it without unbraiding that, that wire. So, it looks like I need, I need... I'll have to need a fitting for the 19 and then for the 21. This right here is a 20. And it fits that really nice. Man, it fits that real nice. I'm, I'm liking that a lot. Let's see. That number two wouldn't fit, would it?
Well, guys, I'm about to end this feed. You guys have a great day. Well, it is a crimp tube. I guess I could crimp it. There's just a lot of play. It just, I don't know, That's there's a lot of play in, in this. Number two on the 21. But I guess... Maybe if I could... wonder how... Th These are crimp tubes, so I wonder if I can cut it. You know what I'll do later on today? George, have you ever tried to cut these? I might try to cut them and size them down. I don't know. I'll hold them with my tweezers. And then maybe... Whoa. <laughs> I about lost it. I wonder if I hold it with my tweezers and give it a cut. That's why I say I might look into the crimp beads too. I just don't like the way the crimp beads are fat and you know they're about this. So you can actually put two together, get the better a better look. But I mean, if you took your time, let me see where are all my sharpies. I have to hide my sharpies because my kids they love the damn sharpies. So if now this right here is super small, but if you took a red sharpie, if you take a red sharpie and a blue sharpie, You can take the red sharpie and the blue sharpie. You can get the anodized look. You know. And all I did is draw over the. If you guys can't get that focused in there. You know what I mean? You just go over the chrome and it stays shiny like that. Um, Marcos. I got mine. There, It's in a stage of four. Whoa, don't lose them. Um, it's in a package of four. You'll get four tubes, size one, one, two, three, four. I got mine from a local a local craft store, um, Joanne Fabrics. Um, and you'll get them like this, Marcos. And they're from Beadland, and you get all four. Um, they're like thirteen dollars for all four. But you get 600 pieces. Look, there's 250 of the, of the number ones. There's 150 of the number two. There's 125 of the number three. And then there's 75 of the number four. Um, they have an online coupon with your cell phone. 40% um, off. So it's about $9 for 600 fittings. Now all the braided all the braided line and stuff, but I get from um, Lisa over there at Extreme Scale Detail. Now I bought the whole line, and that's what I was doing a little bit this morning is seeing um, what sizes fit what. But this is the one. This is the size I used on the fuel regulator. It's almost so small you can't see it. And then um, yeah, Marcos, look at this, bud. It's Beetlein. Beetlein. You want to look up crimp tubes or crimp beads. Now, they're on eBay, too. You can find them on eBay, bud. But I went and buy the generic stuff. Uh, buy the Beetlein because that way we know their sizes. You know what I mean? We know their sizes are going to be um, compatible. And like George said, um, you don't have to use the Protec stuff. Um, there, these wire here will fit other wires and stuff and other purpose of details, um, throughout your build. Well, guys, um, time to go play daddy. Um, I'm going to get, oh, crap. Uh-oh, guys, look, I got two empties here. 
I got two empties. I'm losing, lost wire somewhere. There's that, there's that. Uh oh. I think I'm missing the 20. Well, there it is. <laughs> he tried to run away, guys, but I caught him. Dude, I have a concrete floor. And usually what gets me, Monty, is it falls on the ground. And your boy goes to back up and I crush it. I'd rather have a carpet monster. <laughs> um, it's like I steamroll it. You put my, my fat butt in a chair with wheels and a piece that hits the concrete. and <laughs> It never fails. I back up to look for it and it gets <laughs> under the wheel. Um, but that's it for this morning, guys. Thanks for joining me. Um, we'll see you guys in a bit. Um, take care. Enjoy the hobby. We'll see you guys in a few. Peace.